Count to Three by T. R. Regan. Performed by Karen Peaks. Private investigator Danny Callahan carried her mug to her desk and took a seat. As she sipped her coffee, her gaze fell on the bronze framed picture of Tinsley on her desk. Tomorrow, her daughter would have been missing for five years. Five unbearably long years. Long enough that Danny was beginning to forget some of the heart's most precious gifts. Memories. The sound of her laugh, her facial expressions, the little things. The picture had been taken a few days before she'd disappeared. Five years old and dressed as a princess, she'd been ripped from Danny's life at the time when playing pretend had become more complex and her favorite three words seemed to be, look at me. The door opened and her assistant, Quinn Sullivan, walked in, carrying a banker's box. Hey, she said as she strolled across the room, set the box on her desk, and went about removing her backpack. At five foot seven inches, 22-year-old Quinn was a good three inches taller than Danny. Her long, dark brown hair was parted down the middle. She never wore makeup. Her teeth were straight and white, her brows naturally thick. The jeans she wore were ripped so that when she sat down, her knee jutted out like a sun-bleached bone in the Sahara Desert. Good morning, Danny said. What's in the box? Grandma decided to take up watercolor, which meant cleaning out the extra bedroom. I wasn't happy about it, but then I remembered the unused basement here at the office and figured you wouldn't mind if I set up shop down there. She gestured toward the door that led downstairs to a damp, windowless room. Danny raised an eyebrow. Set up shop? Yeah. I like to spread out all the information I've collected over the years on Tinsley's case and others, like the teenage girl who disappeared recently. Seeing everything together helps me focus on what I'm trying to accomplish. I had no idea you've been gathering information all this time. Really? Even before you took me on my first stakeout, I would spend hours on the internet. If I wasn't at the library, I was usually sitting in front of Detective Witten's desk, picking his brain about one case or another. In fact, that's where I was when I first heard about Tinsley. James Lee Witten, a detective with the Sacramento Police Department, was the lead investigator for Tinsley's case. He'd always been there for Danny, listening when she called him with a new lead. No matter how many times the information went nowhere, he took what she had to say seriously. She trusted him. How did you meet Detective Witten? Danny asked. I always assumed it was through his wife, Teresa, since she worked at the high school you attended. Quinn shook her head. I've never met his wife. After Mom took off and Dad got sick, I called a taxi and was dropped off at the police station. I sat in the front lobby all morning until Detective Witten took pity on me and brought me into his office. I was 16 and more determined than ever to find my mom, refusing to believe she would just up and leave us without a word said or even a note. Quinn looked to the ceiling as if in thought. I believe I had just turned 17 when I was sitting in his office and he got the call about a little girl who'd gone missing on her first day of kindergarten. Detective Winton wouldn't tell me what was going on. After he jumped up and left, I noticed he'd scribbled the name Tinsley Callahan on his desk calendar. Danny's chest tightened. Months later, Quinn went on, you moved onto our street, and I remember thinking it was fate. We both had someone we needed to find, and two heads are always better than one. Quinn scooped up the box again and looked at Danny. The five-year anniversary of Tinsley's abduction is coming up. I have a great picture of her that I think I'll print and distribute to keep her in people's minds. Quinn headed off before Danny had a chance to respond. Again, she looked at the picture and exhaled. Tinsley. Three months ago, a man by the name of Kyle Harmon, doing time in the high-security lockup at Corcoran, had confessed to Tinsley's abduction. His face had been plastered on every news channel for weeks. Danny didn't believe his story about how he'd gotten the help of a random woman whose name he didn't recall. He said he'd buried Tinsley in a green belt off Bond Road in Elk Grove. So far, though, nobody had been located.